In tonight's Is It Legal segment, remember the computer repairman at the center of the Hunter Biden laptop controversy? Well, he's suing Twitter, accusing the social media giant of defaming his name by essentially labeling him a hacker. Start there with Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall and civil rights attorney Leo Terrell. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Okay, I want you to hear from this gentleman, John Paul Mac Isaac. This is what he said back on December 10th. So about that lawsuit, the New York Post reports this. In the lawsuit, the Delaware man said he was forced to close his store and alleges that Twitter acted with malicious intent by claiming that he had hacked Hunter Biden's laptop. Now, Leo, this was thrown out of court on a technicality today, but the attorneys there say that they're going to figure this out and refile. So nothing yet on the merits. Um, but what do you think the chances are for his case? Uh, you know what? As much as I, I, I'm just so anti-social media, I think they did a disservice to Trump. I'm also a lawyer, and I think this plaintiff has an uphill battle because Twitter didn't identify him. He, he's basically identifying himself as collateral damage when Twitter said that this material came from a hack policy, a hack program, and he's saying that I was affected. From a lawyer's standpoint, he doesn't have the nexus to prove that Twitter identified him by name, mentioned him. He may have suffered, but Twitter did not defame him directly. Well, this is what Jack Dorsey said in a hearing uh, back in November on Capitol Hill when this was being debated shortly after the election. We made a quick interpretation, using no other evidence, that the materials in the article were obtained through hacking. And according to our policy, we blocked them from being spread. Upon further consideration, we admitted this action was wrong and corrected it within 24 hours. Leslie, I find this interesting because we have talked about this before. You think about the New York Times, which is among the papers that published information about President Trump's tax returns, which it is a crime to do that if it's been gained illegally. And I don't think the president signed off on that information being out there. And yet that article was tweeted all over the place. It was retweeted. There was um, no ban on that article being passed along, like there was on the New York Post article, because Twitter said potentially it was hacked. That's going to look to a lot of people like a big double standard. Well, certainly, and I think people already have an opinion, left or right, of double standards, uh, depending on uh, what paper they're reading or what they are looking at blog-wise, for example, online. Look, one of the problems here, Shannon, and, you know, we know this. My, I, I've told you this before. My mother said, never write anything down you don't want the rest of the world to read. Well, this guy <laughs> put himself out there. It wasn't because he found information and gave it to the FBI. I think that was the right thing to do. The problem was when he gave it to the attorney for Rudy Giuliani, and then Rudy Giuliani gives it to the press. You got Steve Bannon commenting on it. So you're going to have everybody looking at him as trying to help the president before an election, trying to hurt the then vice president, now president-elect Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden. And, 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 and even if Twitter didn't call him a hacker, he opened himself up and subjected himself to the scrutiny by his actions. Look, well, I, and yet I wish we've he, had I, no I, denials. We've had no denials from the Biden campaign about the authenticity of a lot of that material that has come out. So that's part of the conversation, too. Um, Leo, let me take us to the next part, which is just an extension of this. This Section 230 that gives big tech giants uh, protection against getting sued in a lot of these cases. Um, here is what Senator Mitch McConnell said about it today on the Senate floor, this idea that it may be repealed or tackled in some way. The growing willingness on both sides of the aisle to at least re-examine the special legal protections afforded to technology companies under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, including the ways it benefits some of the most prosperous, most powerful big tech firms. And, and Leo, there has been some bipartisan support behind this idea of revisiting 230 and whether these big tech companies should have so much insulation. And you know, Shannon, I'm I got I'm gonna be on my knees tonight hoping that somehow Mitch McConnell forces this to be addressed tomorrow. Look, Section 230 gives tech company, social media platform, complete immunity. They get the protection of what they put on their platform. They can't be sued. That's too much power. That's too much freedom to take that type of discretion. Repeal 230. The president wants 230 repeal. I think most Democrats and Republicans think there should be some modification, and I think it should happen immediately because these social platforms have been very destructive, and I think they were also very influential in the outcome of this recent election. All right, um, we're just about out of time. So, Leslie, yes or no, do you think 230 should be re revisited? We got a hard out. 
I think it should be revisited, but I don't think it should be attached to stimulus money mm -hmm. uh, for Americans okay. in, in the amount of 2000 which they so desperately need. Yeah. Okay, Leslie and Leo, come back soon. Thank you both, and Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. We will. Happy New Year, Shannon.